Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So we are over on the PTR server and we have the new weapon class, the Chain and Scimitar. And boy, are we in for a toxic hero class. At least based on what we've seen on the PTR, this thing is kind of pretty nuts. It certainly is, isn't going to be a lot of fun to play against. So let's break it down. We'll hop into some battles with it, do a little bit of care, unit te testing with it through King Alpha, as we normally do, and you can kind of see a little bit how this class performs, what some of its combos and abilities are like, and why I think it's probably going to be a little bit of a pain to deal with on the battlefield. So essentially, its probably closest um, comparison is dual blades. It acts in that sort of way, but it really has two unescapable choke ability is. It has its ultimate, trap and prey. So essentially, this fires the chain at the target, and it has a really sort of fairly easy to use targeting screen. It's relatively hard to miss. And then it drags you, not, not the enemy to you, but it drags you to the enemy hero. And they can't escape this, basically. They get locked in a stun uh, situation as you drag yourselves over to them. Then when you get there, you have this second ability called Scorpion Snare. And this has sort of a two or three meter activation range. So if you're within range and sort of vaguely looking at the enemy within this range, you activate this, you basically teleport behind the enemy and put them into like a stun lock animation. It actually does a reasonable amount of damage as well. And it causes a few other sort of impacts along the way. This can also be used independently of the ultimate. If you're just within a couple of meters of enemy hero, you can also just immediately basically teleport behind them, stab them in the back and put them on the floor. You then get two other abilities, Leap and Slash, which is kind of just like a general damage ability. You can combo all three of these. I'll probably put a clip up now where you pin them down with the trap and prey, keep them on the floor with the scorpion snare, and they're on the floor long enough following scorpion snare to get off a leap and slash as well and all of these sort of work in conjunction. And then finally, you have um, Sandstorm, which is kind of like the mother of all escape abilities. It actually does damage. It puts down this smoke bomb, and it puts you back 13 meters. It's a hugely long way, and it doesn't get blocked by anything. So if there's enemy infantry you know, nearby, if you're in the middle of a blob of enemy infantry, you can activate it and still get out of that blob of infantry without any problems. In that sense, I guess it's a little bit like the Pike's escape ability. So then you'll see there's two other things here and a thing on this side. So you can use the ultimate from your horse. Works in the same way. Essentially, you've just got a bit more height. Um, it'll pull you off the horse and it'll pull you to the enemy. So essentially, you can be chasing down enemy unmounted heroes and use your ultimate on them. They are also good to know that the trap and prey will take enemy heroes off the horse. It will dismount them. And the Scorpion Snare will also cause a dismounting effect, so you can knock them off the horse like that as well. Then the two other abilities you've got, uh, Sand Walk basically activates after you use your um, Sand Storm and basically gives you a movement speed buff. You can see it's essentially a 15% movement speed increase for 5 seconds. This is an ability that you can put into a slot. You'll see you only basically have these four abilities that you can put into slots essentially. But this is basically a, a passive that will happen after you use um, Sandstorm. And finally, we have Stinging Strike. Basically, you don't get a block on this class. If you right-click, you then throw these three little daggers. And actually, at close range, they are really, really damaging. I have found, or basically King Alpha found it and showed me, that if you, you know, use your ultimate string, sometimes it can be better to drop the leak and strike and actually just chuck a couple of daggers in the back, particularly against light armor users, because you're going to get critical hits, and actually seriously racks up some damage before they can get out of there. So, yeah, don't dismiss the little daggers. They are quite damaging, particularly against light and medium armor users. In getting into a few siege battles with the class with um, some of the community managers when they're running their stream although bearing in mind at this point this is like my second ever battle with this class so yeah like I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing at this point thought I'd bring some javelins forgot to put any doctrines on them whatsoever so they are truly awful <laughs> anyway was having a little bit of a play around with it kind of seeing what some of the pros and cons of the class are gets a little bit confusing when you're in the heat of battle trying to perform some of these sort of neater combos I did find a little bit more difficult and one thing I noticed is that the actual sort of damage against base units 
it's just not quite the same as, you know, when you compare it to something like Polax. You know, if I was back here now with my Vector Corp in, I feel like I could output a much higher amount of damage than I'm currently able to. Although you are able to eventually chomp through units. And I think with, you know, better crafted weapons, the right of armor and abilities, you could probably really start to increase that damage a little bit more. And managed to miss that little ultimate there. Good job, Evo. <laughs> The class is obviously light armor, so it is very fragile, but there, obviously there are a lot of currently fragile light armor classes, and they got on just fine, and this is obviously going to be no exception, we'll use the same armor, have the same stats as any other light armor user. I think the thing that makes this class sort of so dangerous is the, a lot of the stun locks, and the fact that you can't really escape it once it starts to combo you, because it can just lock you down and keep you in place, at least you know, if any of you're half decent at using it, you can. And in this case, this guy really shouldn't be able to survive. We were able to get him in the end, but not through any particular amount of skill. Remember, second ever battle with it. We're still figuring out the abilities. I think once we get over that skill cap, I think you'll find that it's turned into quite a dominant class. I you must admit, I am really not looking forward to facing off against, you know, 15 stacks of these in siege battles. And I think that is probably what we are going to end up facing off against and it is going to be exceptionally difficult to deal with particularly as kind of the few classes that aren't playing this launch uh, yeah i think it's going to be kind of pretty chaotic it's going to be interesting to see how this one evolves i kind of feel like it's got to get nerfed it seems like at least from testing that it is fairly powerful it's obviously worth saying that you know i guess we are on the ptr this could change before release but release is, what, two days away? So it kind of seems unlikely. It just seems like an extremely powerful class. And generally speaking, things tend to end up being better than they are on the PTR because people end up getting the time to actually test them properly rather than you know, me who only managed to get on there for a couple of hours testing King Alpha. So I think in reality, we're gonna see this class probably be fairly dominant, particularly when you get in the hands of good players and launches into the game. I am kind of a little bit worried about that. I'd also kind of question why have they kind of gone this route? I think to do I think most people would say that they don't particularly enjoy fighting dual blades. Not necessarily saying dual blade is overpowered or underpowered, it's not really the point. It's not a particularly fun class to fight against. And I think most people would agree with that. And to then pick another sort of quite mythical ninja dual blade star class it is kind of a little bit of a strange choice i think particularly when there was actually quite a lot of choices they could have gone with they've really sort of gone down in this sort of prince of persia style season and there was quite a lot of options and god that's a glorious trend oh <laughs> there's quite a few options they could have gone with and i don't know it just kind of seems like a slightly strange choice to me i kind of hope i'm wrong i'm kind of hope this pans out into a little bit more of a reasonable class than i'm thinking it's going to but at least at the current current mode, what we're seeing on PTR, I think this class is going to be pretty ridiculously powerful. Anyway, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conker's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.